Hi, I'd like to give a short presentation about my April Fool's Day paper. It's about undecidable problems in quantum field theory. Life is unpredictable and theoretical physics is of no exception. Probability is inherent in quantum mechanics and many deterministic systems show chaotic behavior. But today I'd like to talk about the third type of unpredictability. Theoretical physicists working on a topic X uh, often spend their entire lives on answering the following question. Given a system X in this topic capital X, does it have property P? We can come up with various examples. So if you like 4D gauge series, you would like to ask whether a given such system confines in the infrared limit. If you like one dimensional quantum spin chain, then you, would, you might want to ask whether a given such system is gapless in the continuum limit. If you like supersymmetric theories, you are probably interested whether that system spontaneously breaks supersymmetry. The list continues. Um, it can happen that for certain choices of such a uh, class of systems X and the property P, uh, there is no algorithm deciding whether uh, the property P holds for a given X. And also there is a specific uh, X such that whether the system X has property P or not is unprovable. Let us say that such a uh, class of questions is undecidable. The existence of such undecidable questions in theoretical physics was first explicitly pointed out in this paper uh, from 2015, to my limited knowledge. In that paper, the undecidability of the following kind was shown. So they considered uh, various two-dimensional nearest neighbor quantum spin systems. And uh, they asked the question of answering whether such systems uh, are gapless in the continuum limit. And they showed that this type of questions is undecidable. In this April Fool's paper, I give an extremely brief review of this result. And I will also show that the following question is also undecidable. So the class of systems you consider is 2D n equals 2 comma 2 supersymmetric quantum field theories. And you ask whether a given such system has supersymmetric vacua or not. So this question turns out to be undecidable. Uh, for this purpose, we need to recall a fundamental result in theoretical computer science, which says that uh, there is no algorithm which tells whether a program holds in finite time or not. Uh, to see this, let's assume otherwise. Then there will be a program H, which tells whether a program P, when given a text file T as an input, holds in finite amount of time. We now write the following program C, uh, which receives a text file T as an input. So this program starts by treating the content of the given text file as another program T. It uses the program H to see if T holds in finite time, if it is given T as an input, right? And if H says that T holds with t as input, then this program c goes to an infinite loop. On the other hand, if the program h says that t does not hold in finite time, then this program c holds instead. So we can write up such a program and you write this program into a text file c and let's consider how this program C behaves if we put, use this text file C as the input. Well, this program then does the following. If the program C holds in finite time, if C is given as input, then it goes to an infinite loop. On the other hand, if the program H decides that if C does not hold in finite time, then 
the program C holds. This means that it holds if it doesn't, and it doesn't hold if it does. This is a contradiction. This means that no such program H exists. So this is the explanation why there is no algorithmic way of telling a given program holds in finite time or not. Next, we use Gerdel's second incompleteness theorem, uh, which says uh, whether the standard set theory is consistent or not cannot be proved within the standard set theory. We can now consider a program X, uh, which enumerate all possible text files one by one and check if it is the description of a proof of a contradiction, right? So it generates all possible text files and mo most of them are garbage, but sometimes it makes sense as a proof of a mathematical theorem and you check whether the end result is a contradiction. So deciding whether this program holds in finite time is equivalent to proving whether the standard set there is consistent or not. Because of Gerdel's second incomplete theorem, this is impossible. In this way, we have established that this particular question, so the class of systems computer programs, and then you ask whether a given program, XI, holds in finite time. So this is undecidable uh, in the sense that there is no algorithm deciding whether uh, a given program holds in finite time. And then there is also a specific uh, program, XI0, uh, such that whether XI0 holds or not is unprovable. So that specific program just lists all possible text files and checks whether they are a proof of contradiction in mathematics. Now, let me come to this interesting paper from 2015. In that paper, the undecidability of the problem where the class of systems is 2D uh, nearest neighbor quantum Smith systems, and the property you ask is whether the system, given system is gapless in the continuum limit, uh, that was shown to be undecidable. And that was done by constructing a spin system, uh, which depends on the computer program, such that the resulting spin system is gapped if and only if uh, the program xi holds in finite time. Then, because whether a program holds in finite time is undecidable, uh, it follows that whether this particular spin systems is gapped is also undecidable. Let me explain very briefly about how it was done. So they represented the running of a computer program in the ground state of a spin system, such that the running time is encoded spatially instead of as a time evolution. So their artisanal Hamiltonian is such that uh, the system remains gapless as long as the system psi is less than the running time, but it becomes gapped when the system psi is bigger than the running time. So as long as uh, the program stops at finite time, then you can make the size bigger than that. And then the system becomes gapped. On the other hand, if the program doesn't stop, then it remains gapless for the entire L, possible choices of L. So it remains gapless in the continuum limit. Right, so the only new result in my paper today is that the question, the following question is also undecidable. Here, the class of systems we consider uh, is 2D uh, n equals 2 gamma 2 supersymmetric quantum field series. And you'd like to ask whether X has a specific vacua. So that's undecidable. Again, the strategy is the same. You reduce the undecidability to the undecidability of the holding problem. And to do this, I use an intermediate step, namely the undecidability of solvability of Diophantine equations. Here, a Diophantine equation is a polynomial equation of many variables, uh, p x1 dot xn is zero, where the coefficients are all in integers and the unknown 
the variables xi are also all in the integers. So the fact that whether the Diophantine equation has a solution or not is undecidable was shown in the 70s by Davis, Putnam, Robinson, and Matiasevich by constructing Diophantine equations, uh, which depends on a computer program such that the Diophantine equation P xi has a solution if and only if the program xi holds in finite time. As the halting problem is undecidable, therefore, uh, the solvability of the Ophantine equation is also unsolvable. Similarly, uh, if you use the program looking for the contradiction in mathematics, then you can never show that the corresponding Diophantine equation has a solution or not, mathematically. Okay, given this uh, result about Diophantine equation, it is easy to translate uh, it to the undecidability of the existence of supersymmetric vacua of two-dimensional n equals two gamma two theories. So let's do the following. We promote the unknowns x1 to xn to chiral superfields x1 to xn, and we introduce superfields z1 dot dot zn, and finally one additional superfield y. And you consider the following superpotential. You have y and the polynomial p xi of x1 to xn, and you take the square, and you consider sum of uh, all variables such that, that you multiply za times a sign of two pi i x a squared. Uh, let's study the supersymmetric condition. Uh, the derivative with respect to z uh, needs to be zero, and that imposes the condition that sine of two pi i x is zero, which means that x needs to be integer. A derivative with respect to y says that uh, p xi of x1 da, 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 x n is to be zero. And you can check that the derivative with respect to x a uh, do not impose any further restrictions. So this system has supersymmetric vacua uh, parameterized by z a and y if and only if the Diophantine equation p xi has a solution. So uh, you cannot show whether such supersymmetric system has a supersymmetric ground state or not. So that was what I wanted to show. So let me summarize. There are cases that for certain choices of theoretical physics questions that there is no algorithm deciding whether the particular property holds for a given x. And furthermore, there is a specific x such that whether that system x0 has property p or not is unprovable. For more details, please see my paper. And you can also ask questions in the comment section of the YouTube page. Thank you very much.